Hey guys, one of the most important skills that you can develop as a music producer is the art of mixing, mix down. And what that is, is working with each one of the elements in your tune to give them each their own place in the mix while retaining a nice balanced flat sound and giving it that professional polished sheen. It's the use of equalizers and compressors, spatial effects like reverbs and delays to set things forwards or back in the mix, side to side, to make them bigger or smaller such that everything has its place and each element sounds very, very clear. Now this is such a huge, huge topic I wanted to uh, bring on one of the top minds in the world uh, to be able to give you guys some free tips and tricks. So I've sought out a, another Ableton certified trainer named Jake Perrine. And Jake is the author of a whole series of books on Ableton Live. And the reason why I've sought him out is Jake is a veteran mixing and mastering engineer. And he's also taught the electronic music production program at the Art Institute in Seattle for over 10 years. So the guy's a total veteran, total professional. And Jake has uh, decided to come on board and offer you guys some free tips and tricks. Now, mixing is uh, such, a, such a vast topic that it's impossible to cover uh, everything you'd need to know to get to a professional level in one video. So I've also brought Jake on board to do a month-long, very intensive, very in-depth live streaming web course. Now, if you guys are interested in developing your skills further and really getting that professional edge to your music, then you can click the link below this video and find out more about the webinar. But otherwise, uh, Jake is going to be giving you a tip today on doing vocal processing in Ableton Live, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So here's Jake. Hey everybody, Jake Perrine here. Today's lesson is going to be a very brief tutorial looking at treating vocals in a basic way. This is not a catch-all for every possible vocal situation you might run into, but it would hit a lot of them. Let's listen to this uh, vocal recording that we have here. Okay, so it's um, it's not a great recording. It's a, it's an okay recording. It's got a lot of background noise. Uh, it's a little bit thin. It's a little too dynamic overall. It's not going to sit very well in a mix um, because it has parts that are too loud and too quiet. So we're going to use the three basic um, live devices for polishing this up. First on the list, the most obvious choice here would be a gate. And the gate is simply a dynamics processor that's going to turn the volume down whenever the volume drops below a particular threshold. Let me turn it on and show you what the difference is. Here it is without. You can hear the background noise. I'm going to turn it on. And now you hear that between the phrases, the threshold gets crossed down here around minus 34 dB. And as soon as a quiet part strikes, the gate will just turn it off. And that's indicated by this little light here. These three dials will control how quickly the gate will respond once the threshold has been crossed. Right now I've got it to attack very, very quickly so that when she starts singing, the gate opens up very, very quickly, so you can hear every little crisp nuance of the beginning of each phrase. I've got a brief hold that says, after it drops below the threshold, wait another 104 milliseconds before actually closing. And then when it starts to close, it closes with a rate of 137 milliseconds. So it actually turns the volume down across a little over a tenth of a second. So that creates a pretty tight 
closing gate on the voice and yet releases uh, back uh, to an open status with the uh, attack being so low pretty quickly. So that cleans up our background noise. Next, let's dive into the EQ. EQ8 has up to eight different bands to work with here. And what we want to do is bring out the parts that we want to hear more of and turn off the parts that we don't need. I like to call EQ the salt of the audio device world and compressors are the pepper. And uh, we're going to... <clears throat> We're going to go about removing the parts that we don't want and spicing up the parts that we do want. So, the first band I'm going to add here is a high-pass filter. That's this shape right here. The high-pass filter says, let the high frequencies pass and cut out anything below the cutoff frequency, which right now I've got it at about 118 hertz. In the human voice, particularly the female human voice, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on down here besides plosives. Plosives are like P, T, and F. You know, a lot of wind that we really don't need to hear anyway. So I've got, um, I've got a high-pass filter here to cut out some of that low junk. What I like to do with the high-pass filter is to start it with it all the way down slowly drag it up until it really starts to negatively impact whatever it is that I'm trying to EQ and then roll it back just slightly until I'm hearing everything that I want to hear. Even though you you may not miss hearing the stuff that's down here, it will definitely uh, clean up your mix in that you're not wasting um, sonic energy on the stuff that's down here. This stuff is very dynamic, the pops and the plosives and it will definitely clutter up the low end of your mix in, in ways you, you don't need. So let's try that technique. So now we're really stealing a lot here. Nice. Let's see what we can do with a few of these other bands. I like to have my band 1 be a high pass filter and I like to have my band 4 be a uh, high shelf, which is this one right here. And this will bring out the air in the voice. Let's listen to this. Just makes her sound a little bit light, lighter, you know, more fairy-like, um, and and have a real sort of crisp presence to uh, the breath of the voice. That's up in this area above. Uh, right now, we're boosting above about six k. These other two bands I'm going to bring in are uh, two little points in the in the voice that um, I decided I didn't really like. Um, quite that much resonance in these spots. And I'm going to show you a little technique that I love to use with EQ that um, you can use to f locate and then remove or diminish uh, sections of a particular sound that you'd like to uh, deal with. So I'm going to leave just number two on here for a moment and return it to neutral. And I'm going to play it and I'm going to first boost and search around with the boosted number two here until I find an area that really picks up a, a section of the, of the recording that I don't particularly like. And then I'm going to slowly drag it out and back in until there's just enough. So find it, remove it, and replace it. That's usually the technique that I like to use um, with my notch filters, and that's these right here. Ooh. 
That seems like a good one. I'm going to pull it out. So that seems to be a, a hot resonance in this particular voice, whether it be due to the microphone or um, just the way her voice sounds naturally. But um, just by taking out even a slight amount, I'm only taking out uh, two and a half dB here, um, I can smooth out the different resonances of the voice and make it seem a lot more natural. Here is another one. I'm going to do the same thing with three and see what I can come up with. Maybe somewhere in there. So this isn't necessarily the final thing. Um, I'm just looking around for different um, different uh, blends that I can put together that, that seem to bring out the parts that I like in the voice and uh, diminish some of the parts that I don't like so much. The third and final part to this is a compressor. And you might say, well, should I put the compressor before the EQ or after the EQ? Um, both will work. They both do different things. In this instance, I'm using a sort of classic remove the parts that you don't want prior to compression because if you have a great big resonance of something uh, in the voice, it might be triggering the compressor and turning down the volume of the, of the uh, compressor um, because there's still maybe low end information in the signal that is causing the compressor to work really hard and pump really hard. So in this particular usage, I am going to remove the stuff that I don't want and then compress this, the remainder of what's left over. Uh, both will work. They have different sound. Um, for voice, I tend to start here. If I get a good recording of the voice to begin with, I'll put the EQ after the compressor and I have maybe a, a slightly different sound. So with the compressor here, I am going to try and limit the dynamic range. Um, I will be turning down any signals that go over the threshold, which currently is about minus 35. And they'll be turned down at a ratio of 2.72 to 1, meaning for every almost 3 dB over the threshold, we will get 1 dB back. Um, so if we went 6 dB over the threshold, we would only output 2 dB. The knee here is going to be very soft uh, because I want the onset of the compression to be very gentle, not sudden, like you might on a bass or a kick drum or something like that. She's got a very dynamic voice, and I want to gradually increase the amount of compression as we go along. Let's start there, and we'll explain the rest of the controls once we... Uh, once we get that far into it. Not bad. Uh, you'll notice I've turned off makeup gain. Um, I don't really like to use the makeup gain uh, on voice. I like to dial in the amount that I want. I use this kind of as a volume knob after the compression has taken place. It seems like I'm reducing the gain by somewhere around 6 dB. It's hard to tell because there's no actual uh, gradations on here, but I've gotten used to trying to read this meter, and about 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction is all that I'll ever try and use, even on some of these really hot, uh, super loud points. Let's hear this. The air is breeding this so Great. So uh, since I'm taking out about 6 dB, I'm putting back about 6 dB. So if the loudest parts like this are being turned down as much as 6 dB, but the whole thing I've just increased in gain by 6 dB. Um, we've reduced the overall dynamic range of the recording so that we can turn the volume up. That's generally what a compressor is all about. Now, 
these two controls are super important. Um, how much of the initial pop of her voice do we want to let through before we actually start to compress? And after the compression sets on, how long will it take for that compression to release? Let me dial in the attack knob here a little bit, and you can hear how the initial attack of her voice is going to be diminished when I turn this down. And when I turn it up any higher, too much will come through and there'll be a great big popping at the beginning of her, of her voice. The attack is so high, you're not actually hearing anything. Here's all the way down. So that pushes her voice way down very, very quickly uh, because the attack is, is too fast. And so we're losing any of the sort of um, breathy dynamics that happen at the beginning of each of these phrases. Particularly this phrase right here I'm going to focus on for a second. And I'm going to dial the attack up a little bit higher and let's listen to that. So you can hear that initial <laughs> at the beginning of the first note there. As I turn it all the way down, it'll be squashed completely. Or almost completely. And as I turn it up too high, it'll be too dynamic. So I want to be able to catch a little bit of each of those notes, but I also want to let a little bit through, and I found around five milliseconds seemed to be the happy medium between the two. Great. Same thing on the release. If I have it too high, it will just sound dull and flat. And if I have it too low, it will sound too too much in our face, up, up close and in our face, and, and may even distort. not even doing a whole lot with that fast of a release. So I do want it to actually cushion um, the volume as it, as it plays. And I found somewhere around 100 milliseconds seemed to work pretty well. Cool. So those are our three different uh, processors. I'm going to add in a little bit of delay and reverb here and then put it in the context of the track and let's see what, what it sounds like. Here's a little bit of delay with a kind of a, um, resonant filter on it. And some verb. simple tools you can use to clean up vocal recordings. That's our tip for today. Talk to you soon. <laughs>